Come on in here. Yeah, it's that time. It's 11 o'clock and I am in my studio. Yep. Yeah, I'm here and it's Friday, January the 3rd of 2020. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I came home last night. I got home about 11.15. Um, it was raining cats and dogs from my drive over from Knoxville. And it, it's good to be home. It's good to sleep in my own bed. And I forgot to print out the questions that Liz had me. I'm trying to think. How can I get them? Oh, my. How can I do it? I don't have my my I don't have my iPad here. My phone's right there. I'm going to have to go get my computer. Y'all hold on a minute. Keep filing in here. I'll be right back. back. I got your questions. I told you I'd do question and answers today. Let me get them up here. There we go. Let's see. Go to Liz has me some good questions. Okay. We got 269 people in here. Can you discuss email clutter is the first question. That kind of lights things up, doesn't it? Can you discuss email clutter? Oh, I, let me remind everybody, all our big sales are ending in a few days. So don't procrastinate. I know you've been procrastinating all, all, all Christmas. And now's the time because we're going to close them all out and start over. So, first question is, can you discuss email clutter? Well... Digital clutter, digital email is not clutter because you can hit Command A or Control A, select all and delete with one failed sweep. If we could do that in our house, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if we could get rid of our clutter just like that. Think about Bewitched many years ago. I'm telling my age now with... Uh, <clears throat> She could just wiggle her nose and stuff would go away. But guess what? We don't live in that kind of world. We don't live in, you know, magic. Magic doesn't happen. But guess what? Uh, that's our motto this year is decluttering gently in 2020 teaches us that enough is plenty. And when you think about things, think about our clutter. We have multiples of lots of things. L multiples. We don't have to live this way. We really don't. So email clutter. And if you think my email is clutter, then ask somebody who's got their house clean. Our email is not clutter. It is a way of popping in your head. If you can get thousands of tweets a day and hundreds of Instagram photos a day, that's what you're filling your brain with. When you can fill your brain with something that's going to change. Wait, 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 wait. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Justin. I forgot to put my microphone back on. When you can fill your brain with stuff that's going to retrain it, you're just making new pathways that's going to help you in the end. It's going to really help you. So, email is not clutter. It's digital. 
anything digital. Now, we get spam and stuff like that, and we can set up filters for that to go to our trash, but our email is not trash. It's going to help you if you will allow it to wash right over you in a good way. And it's going to change everything, everything. Okay, next question. How do you get your sink so shiny? Well, it's a process. Shining your sink is the very first habit. And in 1999, when I set out to get organized, we had, I picked shining my sink as the one thing that I would do. And I wanted to practice it for the whole month of January, the whole month of January. Cause I decided I needed a grace period. I needed to be kind to me. Well, our sink was 25 years old. Robert built this house when he was fresh out of college. Well, he'd been a lawyer a couple years when he built it. And we have hard water. So that hard water had formed a crust around things. I had to take a chisel to clean clean that calcium deposits off and before I, I spent two hours shining my sink I took SOS pads you know those steel wool pads and scrubbed my sink our sink and I I took uh, the edge of a knife and scraped things away I took a toothbrush I took dental floss I used everything I could think of to get my sink clean get our sink clean and you know, I filled filled one side up with hot water and put uh, some bleach in it. Uh, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that, but hey, I didn't know any better then because when you have a septic tank, you shouldn't put bleach. It bleach kills stuff, bacteria in in your septic tank. So. But I could use some SOS pads, some comment, but you don't want to mix those two and because you can get sick. You can, you can pass out from it. And I've known people who have done it. People I went to church with who, who tried to clean their shower with bleach and ammonia, different products and created some kind of gas and it was awful. Now, shining that sink was the most important habit I ever practiced because I was making those little rivulets in my brain that taught me to keep doing this. And uh, somebody's asking you to share our videos. There are hundreds of thousands of millions of people that want to get organized this year. We can help them do it if you'll share our videos. So the main thing here is go shine your sink. However, you have to do it. And then keep it clean and shiny. That's the habit. Wiping it out after you. And I now watched my grandmother do this. I watched her every day. Every day of her life. She would wipe her sink dry. And she would take that dish towel that she had been using to dry dishes and everything. And wipe down her counters. And she would put it in on her washing machine to be washed. She would let it dry and she would put it on her washing machine to be washed on Monday. She did her laundry on Monday. Now, I remember helping her do laundry on the weekends because she worked five days a week at a sewing mill. And she was a hard working lady. She worked hard. And we would... Um, she had a ringer washer and she was so proud of her little ringer washing machine and she would wash the clothes and then she would run them through a a thing that would squeeze all the water a ringer she would run it through a ringer and they'd come out the other side she wouldn't let us do that and we'd catch it and then she'd rinse them in in a big bucket. We've seen these things on Pinterest where there's a rinse side and a wash side and and she would we had a lot of fun helping her. But she wouldn't she would let us catch the clothes. She wouldn't let us feed the clothes through the wringer. And it was just a a lot of fun to help her. But you know, we got it easy these days. We got washing machines that do it all for us. All we got to do is get the appliances going. 
We got dishwashers that wash our dishes. And a dishwasher is a dirty dish disposal unit. So we don't have any excuses anymore. Do you hear me? We don't have any excuses because most of us have the appliances we need to get this stuff done. Uh, how can we, how can you help me get back to basics? Well, here's the basics. Let me find my books here. If you don't have this book, you need to get it. This is our baby steps. Chaos to clean in 31 easy baby steps. So we're on day three. Let's see what day three is. Day one, day two, day three. Keep your sink shiny and continue to get dressed when you get up each morning. We're piggybacking one habit on another. You see how easy this is? We're, we're getting up and getting dressed to lace up shoes and we're keeping our sink clean and shiny. Get this book. You can actually get a 20% discount on it if you use clutter free right now. Next, how do you handle your routines when you're traveling back and forth to Knoxville? Well, my husband has routines too. And we have a Roomba that keeps the floors clean while I'm gone because when I would go before, dust bunnies would grow because we had three dogs and two cats. And now they don't do that anymore because he empties the Roomba every night and he does, he keeps the sink clean and shiny. He runs the dishwasher. He wipes down when he cooks in the kitchen. He cleans up after himself. That's the main thing. Now, when I get home, I need to do a weekly home blessing, but I got my little tiles to do that with real easy. I feather dust. I get some, uh, cause he doesn't notice the dog nose prints on the door and different things like that, but that's okay. He's keeping the critters fed and everything is wonderful. So how do I keep my routine? I have routines at Ben's house. I have routines. I get up and I get dressed to lace up shoes. Sometimes I curl up on the couch waiting for him to wake up and we watch the sun rise because the sun comes right in the back door and I've hung some crystals up so we got some Pollyanna crystals going and we just have a lot of fun. But I still get things done. I break down boxes as they come in. I don't wait for everything to pile up before I break them down. It's taking care of things as they happen. I run the dishwasher when it gets a load or even if it's just a half a load because he doesn't have a whole lot of dishes and we just get it done. We get it done. I'm a new fly baby as of January. Which book should I begin with? This is the one. It's on our website. Somebody put a link up. Somebody put a link up for it and you can get it. You can get it on Amazon too. But you can't get the 20% discount on Amazon. I work overnight. So my routines are backwards. When do I enforce a shiny sink when others in my home are always home and eating? That's your perfectionism. If it's, if it's clean and shiny before you lay down to get some sleep when you get home at night and then when you get home first thing in the morning, that's when you empty out the, empty out the sink, put everything in your dishwasher. You got to have routines. And so when you get home in the morning, all you got to do is change the name of your routines to get home from work and go to work. Get home from work and go to work. When you're working night shifts, that's what you need to do. Just change the name of your routine. So when you're, when you get home from work, that's when you shine your sink. Just before you go to bed, that's your before bed routine because you've got to sleep. You need more sleep than normal people when, when you work, work, cause you, when you work night shifts. 
And I told when we're at the hospital and the night shift comes in, they are precious. They are precious people. And they get things done. They get things done. And then they go home and sleep. They usually work from 7 to 7. 7 to 7. Because they work 12-hour shifts. Would you be able to share with us how you make your collagen cubes that you made for yourself recently? Well, I made some more day before yesterday and I got some little um, disposable throwaway plastic four ounce cups from Amazon. I got 200 of them and they've got a lid on them and I really got them for, for Ben's medication. But what I did was I put together this collagen. So get some Knox gelatin. I used four packs of Knox gelatin. I used um, about eight scoops of Leanne's Perfect Paleo Protein. I say that three times in a row. I used um, her L-glutamine, which helps with cravings. Uh, Let's see, what else did I put in there? Oh, Leanne, help me. What else did I put in there? You can put some fiber minder in there if you want to. I used coconut uh, water and I brought it to a bowl to dissolve the gelatin in. And then I added that to the powdered mixture, put it in the blender and blended it all up. Oh, the hot melt mix. Yes, the hot melt mix has is full of amino acids, uh, um, of um, nutrients. So I add that, and that gives it a wonderful flavor. I didn't put the fiber minder in it this time because something in the hot melt mix does everything it needs to do. You could put some vitamin C in it. You could do lots of things. And... Somebody asked, how do you get 20% off on the Chaos to Clean book? Order it off our website. That's how you do it. Order it off our website. You can't get it off of Amazon that way. And the, the hot melt mix makes it taste key limey. And it was, I, I put them in the, in the little cups, I did 19 of them and I put them in the crisper drawer because crisper drawers are, aren't for veggies. And it's not bland at all. It's, it tastes a little tangy. So you could add some extra vitamin C to it. I just, I don't have a recipe. I just play with it. I mix all my powdered stuff together and then I slowly blend in the liquid. And I put a can of coconut milk in it so it's got the fatty stuff and I actually added some extra coconut oil to it to the hot liquid that was dissolving the the Knox gelatin and I made four ounce little things and I put it in the blender and it mixed it all up and it was good and foamy so it's got a layer of foam on top that gels and Crisper drawers are slime drawers if you put veggies in them. I really believe that with all my heart. So I keep cheese and butter and all kinds of things in my crisper drawers. I don't keep veggies in my crisper drawers because they get left in there and they get slimy. So they're slime drawers. Men did not design refrigerators or they, wouldn't, they would not have crisper drawers. Okay, next question. Collagen cubes, okay. How do you fix your black-eyed peas? Well, this year I went to uh, went to the grocery store and bought them <laughs> in a can. But you can get dried peas that are relatively inexpensive. You soak them overnight and cook them with. I like to cook them with some bacon. Okay, when, um, and how do you make your turnip greens? Well, I don't do turnip greens. I do collard greens, and I buy fresh collard greens. I cut the stems out of the middle, and I didn't cook any this year. I saw some at the Fresh Market or whatever it was called, the one that's owned by Amazon. I don't know the name of it, 
and I just bought a little tub of it and we ate a little. So, but then I take them and I take the center tough part of the stem out because I don't like that part because it makes my greens, my collard greens yucky. So you can use that in soup and different things, whole foods. Okay, thanks Leanne. What I do is I take them and I cut them into strips and then I cut them into one inch squares, you know, one inch squares. And I fry two pounds of bacon and then I add the greens to that with a little bit of white wine or water or chicken broth, whatever you want to do, and cook it down. And it is to die for. Makes me hungry right now. How do I get my husband motivated? His clutter is so overwhelming. You can't. All you can do is take care of your clutter. Because if you start messing with his clutter, he's going to buy more. So his clutter is off limits. His clutter is off limits. Because if you try to declutter his stuff, you're just going to create a monster. So stop it. Stop it. When traveling, what do you typically eat? When I travel, I end up eating bad food and then regret it. I understand that. I totally understand that. The other night, Ben and I went out to dinner for the first time since he's been out of prison. We did go to Waffle House, but I don't count that as dinner. And then we we went to a Mexican place, but he couldn't eat. But we went to dinner to Texas Roadhouse. And he had some peanuts, and he had a steak, and he had a baked potato. Now, we had to take, I didn't eat my baked potato. Um, he said he wanted it, so I got it for him. So we took the steak. So I try to eat really, really good foods, you know, meat and veggies. That's what I eat when I'm traveling. It, and I try not to eat fast food in the car, but sometimes that doesn't work. And I found that Jimmy John's, this is my new favorite place. Jimmy John's has a lettuce wrap where they put wonderful sausages and veggies and wrap it in leaves of lettuce and put it in a burrito. And it is no carb, no carb. And it makes me happy. It really does make me happy. And it's, it's, I love it. You can get it with turkey. You can get it with anything. The next question is, my holiday decorations are still up and all the presents are still under the tree. I need help getting motivated. Well, one time uh, I had a friend who, who, she would leave the presents under the tree until she wrote the thank you notes for them. And she would write a thank you note and then she would go put it away and she would declutter something that that thing replaced. Yep. You can do it. So take one gift and write a thank you note for it and put it away and then declutter something that goes in that place. I love... I. I just think that's a wonderful idea. And she taught her children to do the same thing. So try it. You might actually like this. And, and then you can start taking down the decorations. Now, a lot of people don't like to take the decorations, your tree down, until after Epiphany, which is, I think it's Monday or Tuesday of this next week. So don't beat yourself up if your tree's still up. You can take a few ornaments off if you want to. You can take a few ornaments off as you walk past the tree every every day. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Put your bin that you put your ornaments in right beside the tree and just when you get a chance, take two or three off and put them in the in your bin. Don't make a big deal out of it. It's slow and steady. Progress not perfection. Sometimes we get so caught up and want to undecorate everything at one time that we let the whole house go away. 
So baby step your way to undecorating just like you've baby stepped your way to getting it decorated. And don't beat yourself up about it. But if your Christmas tree is still up February 14th, I'm going to call you on it. Because <laughs> every new holiday, I check to see if your Christmas tree is still up. So you be ready. Let's start taking it down. I think that's all my questions. Let's see if Patty has any. Yep, Justin told me I had I had to put my microphone on. So don't forget our sales, y'all. And you know, let's baby step our way into a wonderful year. 2020 is the start of a new decade. Imagine, you know, I started flying in 1999 the year before we hit the millennium, millennial. So I've been, all of 2000s, I've been flying. And it has changed my life. The best way to learn how to use an Instapot is to look at some videos on YouTube. That's how I learned. And I like to let mine cool down by itself. I don't like to fast. Uh, get the pressure out of it because you can spew stuff everywhere but let it cool down by itself and yep so instapot is a wonderful i got one at ben's house and i have one here so let's let's take it easy on ourselves the chaos cure book is a great book for the millennials yeah it is. You know, I got to thinking the other day. And you know, our, our whole system of time and date is based upon before Christ and after Christ. You know? And we... Christ was born 2,020 years ago. So at this point, 2,000 years ago, Christ had not even started his ministry. Now, when he was 12, we don't know much about his life until he's about 12 years old. We don't know where they were hiding in Egypt or whatever. And then he, he gets grown and he's 20 years old. He would have been 20 years old 2,000 years ago. He was probably, and you know, just imagine Christ working with Joseph, building furniture, building things. He was a carpenter. He, he had a skill, but he still, you know, he was going through his routines every day. He didn't know what well, he probably knew because, you know, he was God with us. He hadn't fulfilled the prophecy yet, and he knew he hadn't. And he was waiting for the right time. And when the time presented himself, he started his ministry. He started helping people. He started performing miracles. All of these things. And think about, he was 30 years old before he started his ministry. A lot of us get impatient and, and we want to force, force what we need to be doing with our lives. We want to force this. And we just need to let the Holy Spirit guide us. That's what happened to me. I was 43. I was 10 years older than Christ was when he started, 13 years older, when Christ started his ministry. And, but I had to get my home in order. I had to let go of everything that was pulling me down. I had to get organized before I could find my purpose. And I didn't find it. God laid it out there for me. God gave me you. I saw a need. My house was clean. I had no excuses to say, I can't do that. I don't have time. But I said, you know, I can do something. It might not be much, but I can help a few people here. 
And, and the first day I set up the email group, there were 10 people signed up. Then next day there were 25. In a, in a month's time, there were 100. And now there are hundreds of thousands of you on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, everywhere. You're everywhere. All of women want the same thing. They want to have a home that looks print, Pinterest perfect, but it doesn't happen with the wiggle of your nose. It doesn't happen that way. We have to let go of our perfectionism because perfectionism is evil. Perfectionism is from the devil trying to keep us separated from our Holy Father. And when we let go of our perfectionism, I don't use Instagram. Liz does, but I don't use Instagram. I use Facebook, I use Twitter, and I use YouTube. Those are and those are my three things. And it I might start a periscope. I might do that. But the main thing here is I let go of my perfectionism. I didn't tell myself I wasn't good enough. I didn't speak well enough. I wasn't sophisticated enough to talk to people. I just started writing. And for many, many years, I just wrote. You didn't see me. You didn't see me on Facebook. We didn't have Facebook till, I didn't, wasn't on Facebook till 2009. That's been 10 years ago. But I didn't have any excuses because my house was in order. My dishes were done. My laundry was caught up. And it was great. It was just wonderful. I could not make an excuse to God anymore for not doing what he laid in front of me to do. And getting your house in order and this year is your year to get your house in order. Because it's going to change your life. Having a house that's always company ready. That you're able to open the door. Having freedom in your life. Freedom. To step outside of your home and go help somebody else. At a time when somebody needs it. Instead of saying, I can't do that. I don't have time. I have routines in place that help me to keep our messages going. Help me to mentor you. Yes, I might miss a, a Facebook live show every once in a while. But guess what? Absence makes the heart go fonder, grow fonder. You, you look forward to me being there. I look forward to seeing your comments. So folks, let go of your perfectionism. It's a new year. It's a new decade. And you can do this. I did it. It took me nine months to get my home to where it wasn't a bother anymore. Nine months. Think of it as giving birth to a new you. Giving birth to a new you. We give birth to our children. Nine months of gestation. We are slowly and we are gently going to establish these habits and declutter our homes. We have way too much stuff. I went yesterday to a young couple's house who had something for sale on, on uh, Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. You can find some pretty good deals. I bought a outside patio set for Ben in a pretty red color. I love red. You know I do. And it had some cushions in the chairs where Ben would feel comfortable sitting them. It's still in the back of my truck. I had to come home with it. Uh, and the main thing, they're moving. And, and I said, check out my website. I have a whole section of move. They're moving to Colorado Springs. He's going to be teaching at a college in Colorado Springs. And it was just absolutely, she had, a, you know, they can't even list their house because they got to get rid of some stuff. 
And I told her, I said, you got to get rid of stuff. You do not want to carry all this clutter to Colorado because it costs you a lot of money to move and you don't want to move clutter. So start thinking about your home as if it were a tiny home. And what would you take with you? What would you take with you? What it cost you, I mean, I know, I know people who have sold everything and hopped in a motorhome, my next door neighbor, hopped in a motorhome and found where they wanted to live. They left California in a motorhome, pulling their car, and sold everything except their, their mementos. Simple little things they wanted to keep. A couple of boxes each. So, folks, get rid of your clutter. It's holding you back. It's holding you back. It's keeping you from being, being flexible. It's keeping you from helping others. So, in this new year, let's declutter gently. In 2020, it teaches us that enough is plenty. How cool is that? I love that. I love this new motto. Decluttering gently teaches us that enough is plenty. We need to have just enough. I have just enough at, at Ben's home to be able to cook. Well, we went to, we went to Target and we got some cookware. If you don't like your cookware, get rid of all of it. We have some plastic tubs to put things in. We, Ziploc bags work too. You realize that you don't need a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot. You need love. And clutter is a tool of the evil one to keep us separated from our families. To keep us from doing what we need to do to bless others. So folks, take some time today and declutter a little bit every day. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes before you go to bed. It's quite simple. We're in the entrance of our home. This Today's the last day of the entrance of our home. Your front porch, your entrance, your dining room. What can you declutter out of your dining room? I love you all. Hopefully I'll be back on here at 3 o'clock for tea time. We can do this. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. And let's do this. Let's get our homes in order. For you to be the person you're supposed to be. I love you all. Talk to you later.